If you've ever wondered what this button here, the FX button does in GarageBand, we're gonna find out. Now the FX function here applies to your entire project, which means that a lot of folks don't use it much because it's not particularly handy, but there is a way to actually use it with one individual track and hang around to the end because I'm gonna show you how to do that. But let's take a look at some of the different effects that we have in here. Now, whether you're on the iPhone or the iPad, it'll work the same way. But when we're playing our track here, if we uh, tap on some of these different effects, you'll see the different ones we have. So we have a filter down here in the bottom left. <laughs> which could be pretty cool for all sorts of different music. And then you've got a whole bunch of other things here. You've got the ability to use your, your reverse and your stops and your DJ scratches here. I actually show all of these. I actually like the repeater. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> And look, a lot of these are a little bit more for electronic music than they are for this sort of music. But they're cool to play around with. Now, to record in FX, you, all you need to do is hit the record button here, and we can uh, tap on one of these. And that's kind of one of my favorite ways to use this because GarageBand doesn't have an auto filter. So it doesn't have the ability to automate something like a filter effect or an EQ effect. So if you wanted to get that kind of AM radio going into more of a sort of full sound, you can use that. So all I did there was start with the filter in the top right and drag it down and then release it as we got to here. And you've got the two, you know, the resonance and the cutoff there that you can play around with. You can also change up these. So if you tap on the top there, you can change them to different ones. And you've got two different ones here. You can put anything you like on both of those. So it's a pretty powerful way to actually get some effects here. So let's take a listen to this back now with that effects recorded. <laughs> So that's cool, yeah, but what if we only wanted that effects to be recorded onto, say, our two guitar tracks, or even just one of our guitar tracks? Well, there's a way that we can do that, and it's our old friend Merge. So what we've done here is we've already got that there. We're going to select these two tracks. We're going to select our two guitar tracks here, and we're going to merge these two tracks with our FX track, and you'll see exactly how this works. So at the moment with all of this, if we just exported it, we'd get that effect across all four of these tracks, and that's not what we want. We want the bass and the drums to come in and only be the guitars that do that sort of filter in. So here's how we do it. We tap on one of these, we tap again, and we hit the merge button here. We're then going to select the two tracks that we want to use here and the effects track. That's the key thing. Make sure you add that effects track to there. Hit your merge button. It creates a backup of your project and then it merges together the tracks that you've selected with the FX track. But it's not going to merge your drums and your bass. They're going to be unaffected, but it is going to merge these guitar tracks in. So there you go. It's merged it. It's normalized it. And there it goes. So now... You can see there the FX track's been disabled, and that's fine because we don't actually need it on anymore because that FX has been baked into these guitars. Let's take a listen. Pretty cool, yeah? So this guitar track now has the effects baked in there. We can delete these. We can use this effects track for something different. If we wanted to put some effects on our drums or our bass, we can do that. But if we bring our drums and bass back into this with our effects disabled, take a listen to it now. Pretty darn cool. Now, the one other very cool thing you can do with your effects, apart from recording on your whole track, on your whole project, and recording individual tracks and baking it in, is our old friend, the EQ. So if we tap on the FX and we go in here and we turn the effects back on, we've got a visual EQ here. So in your visual EQ, what you can do is you can actually control the EQ of your entire project. So if you wanted to just add a little bit of EQ, say you've got a whole project and you, it's not got enough bass and you just want to give a little bass boost to your whole track, we well can throw the EQ on here and then just turn up your bass and then it's going to actually add bass to your entire track like this. <laughs> The other thing you can do is adjust your entire, your whole volume here. So you can see I've actually reduced this by 5 dB. If I wanted this to be louder, I can actually turn up the whole project. <laughs> 
Now, that sounds terrible because it's kicked in the auto normalization and auto limiting there. But if I've got my whole track too loud, a cool thing to do here is to bring it all down like that. And then... get a nice balanced track without having to go through and adjust every single one. So a quick look at all the things you can do with FX. I do go through all of the different effects in a different video, which I've linked down below. So if you want to learn what each one of these does and how to use them, then you can check that one out as well as these additional buttons that you can see here, because there's a whole lot more to go into. But that is your quick fire crash course into the world of FX here in GarageBand.